Hi, hi. This is Man Server Boy. Nice to talk to you all again. Today I want to talk about Perl and in particular Perl versus Python. I've been in system admin for over 20 something years. Um, obviously in the in the high uh, in early times we start with um, well basically Python Perl I start with Perl more but um, at say Red Hat 4 time I also see a lot of Python stack dump in particular there were already many system utilities written in Python but day to day use I remember I still um, tend to use Perl more mm, perhaps it's just a personal preference and then lately I got a chance to um, to talk to a um, recruiter like a, a technical manager or something and I was saying oh um, yeah I, I use Python but then I also uh, been using Perl and then he said Perl is dead so um, I, well obviously I didn't pay much attention normally for, for news like this is you know people it's very religious. Some people say Porsche is better, a better car. The other one said Lotus is a better car. It doesn't really matter. It's a car. To me, uh, as a programmer, as well as a system guy, it's just anything that I find convenient and applicable to the situation and problems at hand, then I would use it. So I went up to the web just to take a look, being curious. And there are a lot of similar things, but many are dated back to 2007. <laughs> so, since over a decade ago, people are already saying, oh, Pearl is dead. And then I have a faint feeling or memory that over the last decade, 10 years or something, Maybe the industry promotes or the universities were educating Python for the freshmen and beginners and graduates and so they all graduate with a default to Python and then obviously then they would think oh those old timers using Perl or some other you know dinosaur language they are not good I mean they are you know see what I mean it is the way that you want to justify your use of your your acquired language that also goes to uh, if you allow me to uh, to say a little uh, afterthought is over the years I see all this recruitment advertisement on programmer they always say oh I w we want PHP programmer we, we want C++ plus plus programmer blah 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 and I always wonder why one recruits programmer uh, and put a label it has to be PHP programmer or what because when I recruit people uh, even when I studied in my profession we do programming and by programming it means oh um, we learn different machine model like Turing machine and then we know what is sequential programming, data flow programming, parallel programming and then it really depends on the hardware and the availability of different languages. Maybe say I remember I did transpilers. Um, then I used language Occam to uh, try to transform the domain problem into a parallel, parallelizable algorithm, and you know orthogonal data and pipe it to uh, to uh, the hardware. That's how it is. And we we want programmer right we, we are developers we we could essentially or we should in our profession I believe that we handle many different languages depending on the times context problem on hand so it doesn't really matter uh, if it's Perl, Shell, Script, Bash um, so on and so forth it's just a matter of convenience of course you make your judgment there are there are obviously team thing like if the team are good at certain languages for maintenance purposes it's easier to be standardized on on say a particular um, stack and yeah but no matter what these things keep on changing 
and you still run up to maintaining them, your assets, your software, um, whatever software you've written, you still have to maintain it. In system stuff is easier, isn't it? Because it many times we use scripting languages just for the sake of, um, say, doing very short, uh, not a task not really need to be very long time maintained. We just use it and throw it away. That's our thing. Like transforming certain password into whatever, um, massaging data and import to SQL database, so on, so on and so forth. So it is not like you need to be worried about like application stack where it's going to run for ten years and you need to worry about management upgrade and things like those. So that's it, right? So um, this talk, sorry about the long long sharing about talking this and that, but just want to show you some of my um, feeling over using these two Python three as well as Perl. Um, on just a few tiny areas which I usually do use very often and I find the, uh, the difference uh, are interesting just to share with you. Again, I'm not saying one is better than the other and it's very personal so um, no big deal. It's not like I'm trying to say um, one is better than the other or the other has is what value. No, it's just a, a sharing of what I find it handy over the years. Um, when I switch between the two. Okay, some short example. I prepared. Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, say on the pro side, when I want to read arguments, command line arguments, I would some many times do this. Of course you need to check your like how many arguments and things like that. It just doesn't matter. Just make it simple. So uh, say I assume there are two command line arguments. So this is the way I grab them, All right? Shift. So when you run it, argument one, argument two, then you got that too. So that's the syntax. Now, uh, if I get get to the um, the Python version, which I would use, it, you might write it differently. So don't just don't worry about your yours is might be even more terrors. I use this so it's obviously very structured and make a lot of sense because um, it's not like you have something built in it's modular so you input a module and, and there you have your argument for that module and uh, it's like a, a list or something then you just print out like that so it's, it's for any programmer it's really natural. Perl is very different. It has um, a very loose syntax. Is I over the years I I still feel like maybe I use it too often. It's like it's like a natural flow of um, impreciseness. It's just intentionally being not precise, but it flows out just like your slam just like your your you know your daily uh, makeup which is something which is not very um, synthetically precise but it still works it's that sort of thing so this is one example now um, another example some examples might show more difference uh, I want to get to the regions part Regis. Uh, now this is a very not very complicated example. Obviously, it's a lot easier when you see it. Uh, to there are many times I need to massage data or any maybe you do. Uh, in as a system administrator, you need to do a lot of data conversion for password and mean script um, database whatever. Say 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 for this. This is a date field. I want to extract the year, month, day. So um, th th this is something that I use very often. Uh, the this equal sign with a little curly. That's to tell that I want to apply this regress to the string. So I did it, and basically just very simple. Two occurrences of uh, a character of 
in the set of 0 to 9, blah 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 for, for this. And I got it. Uh, at the same time, you could also do a split, which is we use it very often, as we do. So we split based on the the slash character, and you got the list uh, of that, and then you could pin them out. Oh, I'm sorry, that should be like that. I am right. <laughs> Let me check. I haven't tested. Test the other example, which I thought is right. A uh, little not correct. But anyway, <laughs> correct it later. You could correct me for me uh, with the example. Something's wrong. Okay, let's go back to the Python side. The widgets is close. Of course, you will have because it's like an enhancement. It is not built into. Uh, in Perl is built in there is Python is like an input module so it follows the same philosophy it's like a plug-in and you 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 call you need to call a search method of that class and the widgets is like that the widgets is the same just the um, and then you 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 access the the parenthesized one two three group from the group function or the group method. Uh, to me, it's very clear. It's synthetically again very precise, very consistent. Uh, but it just sometimes might be a little clumsy, less terse in a sense. So that that's the way I look at it. So if you if you have to deal with a lot of even um, groups, then you have to uh, type more, more longer, com longer programming lines, and that's about it. So again, it's structured, very precise, uh, consistent. The Perl side is is um, synthetically very handy, very intuitive, um, and if you're used to it, you will find it very natural. You know, that's that's it. That's the way it is. I'm not sure about performance, but I don't. You know, we we don't worry about performance at, at this stage. So uh, it has also a split function very close to uh, what I could do in Perl. So pretty much in par. Okay, and then uh, we did argument we just while. Okay, so the while loop. Say I uh, use it very often. It, it's, you want to write a uh, a a piped filter. Um, you so you pipe something in there, stand the input, and you do something and stand the output. So that's the basic uh, thing. Now the basic structure com in terms of both are like that, and a little bit more typing. And again, the philosophy is different. You, you look at the pro side where the print it doesn't even you don't even need to know to tell you are intending to print the standard input line. It as would assume that you want to do it. So you save the typing. It <laughs> some some people, some developer might not like it at all. Um, for some they like it a lot, so you know. Uh, so that's 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 the way that the, the philosophy is different. So like I pipe it and it's working that way. And for this, it's the same. Just do the same thing. Just structurally, it's the way that me as a developer, the way that I program it, the the thought that I so flow through it, I would say in terms of Perl, I have a different mindset. The way that I so flow through my programming is different from when I write Python program. It just I couldn't tell you exactly what's the difference because the way that it, it flows out is different. Even when you like you, you write programs you have to visualize in my, in your mind what's logic and how you want to structure these things and and the way that you express your thoughts in Perl is different from when it's in Python. So that that's the 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 the, the, the observation I have. 
Yeah, so argument reaches while loop, uh, just basic three examples, it tries to illustrate the flow of thought is different. I think it has something to do with the synthetical uh, requirement uh, or manifestation, how you describe an expression that's a little different. And um, I think Perl has a merit in it sometimes because it 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 seems to be very naturally adhered to a developer's thoughts. While Python is the Pascal time thing where you know it's structurally very correct and you naturally would would of course would be able to read it the way that it but it's not like you you naturally throw out. Uh, there are more typing, uh, the more typing, you know, the more uh, typo, and you've got more error, and then you have to rerun the correct syntax or typing. And Pro is less typing, less words. Some Pro developers are, I, I've seen some of them are, they wrote it in very, uh, too precise to the extent that it's very difficult to read for. Uh, for me being not too familiar with all the subsint feature of it. So it really depends. Now uh, finally I want to take a look at CPEN, the module repository of Perl, main, main one. And I was checking out oh, there still have development and update an hour ago, blah blah blah, 2022. So I feel a little relieved because I was thinking that it's dead or it's going to die. Oh, uh, might be eventually it will. All languages would die out, like you know, even J two E E Java. I was thinking that it would die, but still around. Of course, the the lock of legacy software in J two E E and and um, my my feeling is is there is um, there's no need to to um, justify A language by killing B language. The, the, the obviously is a community thing there, um, but we are all independent thinking, rational people. We don't need to flock over uh, just by reading the web and say something is dead and we run away from it. The others are making more money and more get, getting more jobs and easily jump over to get more money and more higher pay and I know it, it's a fat lie but then um, we are all good developers and good system I mean right so we we deliver uh, professionally what we think together with the team and the management the best for whoever organization who pay for it so uh, we don't just because of the social media or what um, and there are many times we need to make judgment based on really the problem at hand and be open mind. That's the way I think for this sharing, this little video that I hope to um, send a message across. Um, yeah, so thank you for listening. Have a nice weekend or Sunday. Bye.